welcome back. Well, to see us out in style today, I'm delighted to welcome our closing keynote speaker, who will be talking to us about the subject of the cross-pollination of artificial intelligence. Jean Frirot is a customer engineer working for the Ghent Scale-Up ML6. His education focused on AI and engineering. While Jean loves getting into the technical aspects of machine learning, his true passion lies in matching his machine learning knowledge to a client's problem. Working for ML6 allows Jean to interact with clients on a daily basis, solving problems by putting AI into action. Over to you, Jean. Hi, thank you for the introduction. And thanks everybody for who has stuck around because it's been a long day of really interesting talks. Um, and I would like to start by introducing the company that I work for. So it's called ML6. And these are, oh, I will start presenting. Oh, yeah, you don't see my slides right. No, you should be seeing them. Okay, perfect. Then let's get started by a quick introduction of ML6. So these are some key points uh, about our company. So we, we've been named the largest and fastest growing AI company in Belgium by Deloitte. Uh, to illustrate this fact, at the beginning of the COVID pandemic, we had around 70 machine learning and data engineering experts. Today, this number is over 80, which is, I think, quite impressive given the, the current times. Uh, we are active in four different countries. So we have offices in Belgium, the Netherlands, UK and Germany. And we are Google Cloud's uh, preferred partner in Europe. The remaining two points, I think, are truly interesting for an AI company because AI is, is constantly evolving. Um, so we are always pushing borders. So that's why it's really important to take time and dedicate uh, research work. So at ML6, we have 15% of our time that is dedicated to research. And then obviously, as has been mentioned quite a few times today, AI really depends on open sourcing uh, your solutions. So most state-of-the-art solutions are open source out there and we truly value that. So we, we, we love contributing to those solutions. You might have heard of us in the news. So Julie has won the, uh, ML, the Young ICT Lady of the Year Award. And we have also been named the AI Innovator of the Year this year. So these are two awards that we are really proud of. And these are some of the, I think, more illustrative uh, cases that we've been working on. So if you have any questions of, uh, about these, I will stick around later in the chat. So feel free to ask me anything. Here you can see a, a quick overview of the companies that we've been working for. And as you can see, they really span over all industries. And that will also be the core message of this talk is that we do have experience in different industries and we will see how our solutions can be well cross-pollinated across those industries. So what do we do? Well, at the core, we are a, a consulting company, so we advise. And this you can think of as we give advice concerning how you can implement AI. This means how do you tackle data acquisition? How do you tackle a data architecture? But also how can you really bring the machine learning solutions into actions and include them into your business plan? So secondly, obviously, we love building our solutions. We are developers at core. And so we love building state-of-the-art solutions. As I've mentioned before, most of them start from the state-of-the-art open source uh, solutions that are out there. And then we try to customize them for our, uh, for our customers to perfectly fit them. And lastly, as I've mentioned, in AI, it's really important to keep pushing the boundaries. So we love to innovate. We have a whole lot of pro um, projects that are actually on a research basis, as we call it. We call them brain projects. And so this is a, a collaboration for research, which is really interesting. So these are the people that work for ML6. Most of us are civil engineers in computer science. I myself, too, am a civil engineer in computer science. Obviously, our expertise in the company is machine learning and consulting. But the cool thing is we have a really diverse crowd, so you can always uh, try and learn a new language or practice a new language because our nationalities, uh, we have more than 10 different ones. So it's really cool. So who am I? Again, my name is Sean Figo. I'm a customer engineer in Labs. And what is Labs? It's actually the unit that sits between sales and delivery. So we try to help the client to envision uh, solutions for their problems. So we like to sit down with them 
and, and think how machine learning can benefit them. Okay, so on to the main topic of today. It is the cross-fertilization in action or cross-pollination. And we will be focusing on rank and match examples. So let's head in, right into it with the first example. This was something that we've done with March. That's a real estate company in Ghent, Belgium. And March actually came to us with what I would call a, a vision. Uh, a vision they wanted to become the first proactive real estate company uh, in the world. And for this, they actually wanted to implement a sort of system that could recommend possible clients when, when we introduce a new property. So how did we go about this? Well, our solution was a decision tree based classifier. So for those who are uh, familiar with this, this focuses on the different features of, uh, on the one hand side, the properties so that are introduced in the portfolio, and on the other hand side, the possible target companies. So what are these features? To, to make it very clear for you, features for properties are things such as the location. What is the size of the building? Uh, is it really close to a railway station? Uh, how is the mobility? And on the other hand side, we have the target companies. So the ones that we actually want to rank and list. And there we have things such as the yearly revenue, uh, the, the amount of people that are working there, where is their current location? And then we apply our decision tree based classifier, with, which results in a list of ranked uh, possible commercial activities that could fit the new uh, real estate property. So this is the first part, but the main key one is actually the model interpretability. Why? Well, if you think of this, March wanted to make cold calling a success. So it's one thing knowing who to call, but it's another to be able to explain why you've called them. So on the right hand side, you can see a plot of the Shapley values, which are used for model interpretability. So we can actually visualize what influence the decision of our machine learning model. So let's take a quick look at the results. So this really was a success, uh, both for them and us, I think. So this they increased their resp uh, re response rate to 70%, which is really impressive, given that cold calling, well, if you get 5% responses, that's, that's quite great. And so there's a really impressive gain. And we also see that in the increased number of contacts. Okay, so this was one case, really simple in the in the real estate business. The next one will be one in a recruitment case. So why do you say, well, those are two different things, right? How can we do the same thing? Well, in essence, the model only makes use of mathematical representations. So if we do this for, let's say, properties or companies, I'm just going to take a quick sip. And that's actually all the same, right? So in this case, we start from job vacancies and personal profiles. We transform them into mathematical representation or so-called embeddings or vectors. This is quite difficult for humans to understand. So we use some visualization techniques to actually represent it in a sort of, of sort of space as a dot. So one document, you have a job vacancy or a personal profile gets represented as a single dot in this mathematical space. So what happens if we do this for all the job vacancies and all the personal profiles? Well, then we arrive at something called a search space. And this is actually how we solved the match and rank problem for this case. So let's take the example of you want to fill in a given job vacancy. Well, what you do is you first of all, take a look at the vacancy itself. So this is a dot in our search space. And then you see it, what is nearby. So the reasoning is, here is that the, the personal profiles that are closest to our job vacancy, well, those will be the ones that can best fill that opportunity. So what we see here, the search space, now this is filled with job vacancies and personal profiles, but it could also be filled with properties and commercial activities uh, given the March case. So you can see this is the same approach, matching a given object to a target object. But search patients also allow for more different things and quite interesting ones, if I might say so. We can always match objects of the same class, for example, to properties. And doing this actually unlocks a whole other area of, of different businesses. So let's take 
house A and house B, which are really close to each other in the search base, meaning that they are really similar, well, then we assume that the prices of both houses must be similar too. So this is a new case, price matching or price guessing. If you have enough data, you can guess the price of new houses. But we can do this too for insurance. So if you know the calculations of the insurance cost of house A, well, then we, we can automate this for house B. And the same thing for the mortgage. So this is how one mathematical ID, a search space, can actually be used in in tons of industries. So we had real estate, we've had recruiting, we had insurance, we had finance. Um, so really interesting stuff. And this is really cross-pollination in action. Okay, next, I would like to talk a little bit more about recommendation engines. So these are the next steps in the match and rank domain in AI. So a, a really clear example, Homer loves drinking Dove beer. And we know that Dove Beer, Duff, the, the company also creates other things, such as a Duff shirt. And that's why we recommend Homer to also buy a shirt. Where does this get used? Well, we all know we all use it every day. And I think definitely in the pandemic, everybody's been watching Netflix. And the one thing you want is when the series ends, you want there to be a number of recommendations to watch next. So this is at its core recommendation engines. And let's take a look at how we solved it. Well, again, it is the same solution, right? We, we fall back on our search base. So what we do now is, let's take the example of Netflix. We translate movies, series into dots of the search base. And we do the same thing for users. So this is a little bit new um, compared to the, the previous two cases. And then we focus, let's say I'm watching Netflix and the, the model wants to make a recommendation for me. Then we take a look at the search space. And again, I am a dot here. And we take a look at all the dots that are closest nearby. If those are movies, well, then we can simply recommend those movies. If those dots are other users, on the other hand, well, then we can take a look at what they've been watching and maybe we could rec recommend. So again, one mathematical technique that has a really broad range of uh, solutions. Finally, I wanted to talk about how we actually do cross fertilization within ML6, because we've talked about how we do this for our clients, um, but we also do this in ML6. So ML6 follows the Spotify model. Some of you will be familiar, um, but the Spotify model basically is that the majority of your time you spend in something that is called a tribe, uh, with us, it is called a unit, so I mean the labs unit, as I said before. That's where you spend most of your daily time. But for our research time, so the 15%, we are actually grouped in chapters. So chapters are a group of like-minded people that they don't need to be from the same unit as you are. Um, but then you can get together and really innovate, think about uh, stuff that, you, that you're interested in. And we like to share those findings within ML6 with our quarterly chapter conferences. Um, so these are quite a few examples and it actually gets the whole company up to date, which is really nice. If you are talking to a client, then you are really up to date with the current AI solutions. And one of our solutions that came out of these chapter conferences is actually a Dutch GTP2 model. So on the left-hand side, you can scan the QR code and give it a try yourself. Um, I do recommend that you select the large model because that yields the best results. And we have also written together with Data News a, a whole automated article. So if you're willing to check that out, uh, do go ahead and find it. So as our final slide, um, I would like to end on the idea that solutions are not bounded by industries. So do dare to envision how an, a solution that you, for example, have seen in other industry could work for you. And if you think you have an idea or maybe you want to discuss this, do feel free to contact us. So this is my contact information. I will also stick around uh, in the, the chat. Uh, so do feel free to ask me some questions. Thank you. Mm. Thank you so much. That was truly fascinating. What a beautiful way to have a, a keynote that really tied a thread across all of the content we've had today. Now, as you've mentioned, you'll be here for the Q&A session. So mm -hmm. anyone that would like to join that, please click the link through in the chat that our team are dropping in and Jean will be there on standby to answer your questions. Uh -huh. Thank you again from everyone today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Well, what can I say? It's been a hum hugely informative day and we all look forward to seeing you again at the next Inspired AI session at 1.40 Central European time on the 12th of November, where we will have another AI in Action Day with a focus on the future of health and the future of finance. But for now, head over to the sessions area of the platform where you'll find our networking lounge is open. You can use the chat on the right hand side to start a conversation or click the participate button to share your audio and camera <laughs> to go live on screen. We can have up to nine people on screen at a time. And I think it's a great way to network face to face with your audience that you may have been chatting away with today in Hopin. But if you want to start a topic of your own, you can also do that on, by creating your own subgroups. Simply click on the add session. So there's a plus add session button on the top right hand corner. Complete the details and your session will appear. Invite people to join you by posting in the networking lounge or even in the event chat. Feel free to create groups based on a topic, your industry, geography, whatever you like. Be sure to add yourself to our community WhatsApp group and continue networking post event. Simply head over to the sessions area and you can scan the QR code or enter the lounge and click the link to join. I've had an absolutely wonderful time chairing today's session. It's the sixth episode, um, many more to follow with the team. And I just wanted to um, say thank you to the brilliant team at Inspired Minds and World AI Summit who've been working behind the scenes to bring together such fantastic content. Um, there's an army of people that work behind the scenes to make the technology seamless. So big shout out to you and to everyone that's contributed to social media today. My name's Nish, I'm the founder of Nort. Find me on Twitter at Nishkino and you can also follow me at Nort. Um, and I'm wishing you well and hopefully I'll see you in the networking session.